children that is especially vulnerable in the United States are those who are brought to this country while their parents are undocumented because they fall through the cracks of so many public programs. Do you support a permanent legal pathway to citizenship for undocumented immigrants? Let's see, we just ended with RD, so we should be starting with, again, with Claire, would this one start with you? I can't remember, but I'm happy to I think to start. that's right. I think John started our last one. <laughs> um, so absolutely is the answer. Um, but more broadly, we have a horrific, broken immigration system. Um, I mean, as a mother, what is taking place on our borders, children in cages? I, I it is, it is unthinkable and brings just, um, it, it is un unthinkable and it's gotta stop, right? I, I, I was taught early on that you judge a society, you judge a country by the way they treat their most vulnerable. And to me, it, it, the health of our democracy is in question with the way that this, this president and this administration is behaving on the border. Um, this, we are a nation of immigrants and we must absolutely, um, we, we must address this problem, full stop. So, so we have got to support the dreamers. We have got to provide a path to legal immigration. My father is an immigrant. Um, <laughs> my father became a citizen actually, uh, you know, in two, 2001, after 9-11, he was living in New York City and, and, um, had decided until that, not, not become an American until that day. Um, but, but America gave him uh, a promise that he was denied as a lower class kid orphan in England. And, um, and it's really foundational to how I've experienced this country and to, to why I'm in this race. But um, we, we are a nation of immigrants and our strength is, is in the way that we welcome people into this country. Our strength is the hope that our democracy provides and we cannot be a nation that, that puts people in cages. We cannot be a nation that is denying access to the very system we uphold as the most dear uh, and important things in our lives. We cannot be denying access to, to, to members of our country, to citizens of this country. Um, and, and when I say citizens, I mean every single person, um, not just those that have been granted the path. Oh, thanks. I'm sorry about that. I was muted all the time. Claire, thank you very much for your answer, Claire. Cameron, you would be next. Uh, we often do hear the phrase, we're a nation of immigrants. And I always, it's important to flag that, you know, as the, as the, you know, my ancestors were enslaved Africans, you know, there are certainly Native Americans in this country who have a different path uh, to coming here. But largely, it is true. Uh, immigration is a big part of the American story. And it's a big part of the story for a lot of people who are here. I think that in this conversation, you're asking about, should we have some form of permanent legal pathway to citizenship? And for everybody else in this country, that idea of having a pathway to permanent legal citizenship should resonate with them. Uh, I think that what's been painful to listen to and to watch is as President Trump has outlined who appropriate immigrants to this country should be, really highlighting who in the world is worthy of being an immigrant to the United States, really ignoring uh, the centuries of kind of what makes this that melting pot, that great nation, and ignoring all the value of what diversity does in our society. We have two great examples of what temporary solutions look like in DACA and also in the DREAM Act, and both of those things did help ease a lot of the burden for a lot of uh, undocumented families all over this country. We've seen that roll back over the past few years under the Trump administration. I've gone to medical school with dreamers. I've worked side by side with them through this COVID crisis. They are absolutely contributing to our society in so many meaningful ways. Having permanent pathways to citizenship, citizenship are absolutely critical uh, to our nation being as strong as it can possibly be. But I think, again, it starts with valuing everybody. Um, the other thing I'll note is that for as long as we have this uh, immigration system that, as Claire alluded to, is, is committing these atrocities at the southern border, uh, is just really not fair to individuals. We're also seeing that in our communities, uh, especially with the public charge uh, rule that President Trump introduced, we're seeing uh, kind of a chilling effect on people's ability to access the services that they need. We need to clear that up. We need to fix that right now. Uh, I think legislatively, we have a huge opportunity to, uh, to really create pathways for undocumented families to have the lives that they dreamed of when they came to this country. Thanks very much, Cameron. Ardi, you'd be next. 
I absolutely support the dreamers and I don't understand what our conservative friends are thinking. Uh, in what other scenario do you punish a child for a choice of their parents? Like, how is that good public policy? How is that morally right? How do, how do we even make an argument around that? And listen, um, Johann Jacob Hochstadter came to America, I think in 1736 or something. And uh, he came down to the Piedmont here in North Carolina, down in North Carolina. And so even the Hofstetler's immigrants, we've been here for a long time. And so this country is made up of people that believe that if you work hard and you sacrifice and you think more about the next generation than your own, that we can be a better place, that we can build a more perfect union. That's the whole concept of this country. And the idea that we would punish a young immigrant, a young person who comes here illegally because of some decision because of their parents, that makes no sense. There is no ju justifiable reason for doing that. Uh, and I don't understand why our conservative friends push ideas like that. Thank you, RD. And John, could you close us out? Absolutely. Um, I've enjoyed hearing the stories from uh, you know, you know, you know, fellow candidates here. Um, Claire, like you, uh, well, it was my grandfather who was orphaned. Um, he was brought over here from Poland in, uh, in 1913. He settled in the Detroit area. He was a tool grinder with Ford Motor, a union worker, um, all his life. And my father was the first in our family to go to college. And, you know, and then there's the rest of the story. And you all have very similar stories. And I, I'm thankful for this question. It's the fourth forum that we've been involved in. And it's the first question, first time that we've gotten the immigration question. Um, a lot of great answers here and solutions that I would echo. Absolutely, yes, um, a permanent pathway to citizenship. Uh, this administration's policy on immigration is one of fear and cruelty. And we have, because we didn't get comprehensive immigration form redone, done by Congress previously, we have a, a whack-a-mole system where you have a wall here, you have children in cages there, you have dreamers that are being threatened to be deported over here, um, and, and on and on. And what we also have not done, and what I will mention that my fellow candidates have, have um, not mentioned yet, or have already mentioned, we need, to, we need to look at this at the source. We have defunded aid to countries that are losing their people and want to come to the United States for opportunity. Um, you know, whether that's three countries in Central America now, or other countries that may be displaced by the climate change crisis that we're all talking about, uh, if we don't if, if we don't get involved in their problems, whether they be government corruption problems or um, uh, drug narco, nar narcotics problems, then we're gonna continue to have this inflow to our borders. And so that needs to be part of the solution as well of, as all of the other good ideas that the fellow candidates have. 